Others say it. We prove it. We are controlling transmission. WLTK DB. Let's talk. Alternative Talk Radio. WLTK DB. Views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guests. Any content provided by our host or guest are of their opinion and do not intend to harm any religions, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the show. with the unknown and paranormal realms since childhood. After a profound experience with my grandmother's spirit 20 years ago, I have been on a quest to observe, study, investigate, and communicate with the afterlife and beyond. It's been an ongoing journey of exploration and discovery, one that has taught me how mortality and the spirit world are forever bonded through the veils of time. Good evening, everyone, on this fabulous December 3rd. It's Thursday, and guess what? While you already know this, of course, we are less than one month away from a brand new year. How exciting is that, right? Yay! 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 So... I am super excited for my guest tonight. Her name is Christina Bloom, and we are going to be talking a lot about her journey as a psychic medium. Uh, And I forgot to say I'm so jumbled today. It's been kind of a hard day, but you are listening to the Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond. I am your host, Nicole Strickland, on the WLTKDB network. That's WLTKDB.com or the Let's Talk.com. And you can join the chat room and there's a live player in there. You can choose to lis- listen to the show right in there. So let's segue back into what I was doing, introducing my guest. So, Christina, I'm so excited to have you on my show. Thank you for joining me tonight. How are you doing? Thank you, Nicole. I am doing very well. Really just, I've been excited about this all day. So I'm really glad that we're doing this. Me too. Yeah. I've had like all kind of like warm fuzzies about it. So I'm really excited too. Yeah, me too. So I was reading on your website, uh, pretty much I exhausted your website. You have a pretty eclectic background in metaphysical studies. When did you first learn about your innate intuitive gifts and how did that journey uh, start for you? It started actually when I was a toddler and I started having prophetic dreams. And um, in my dream, I would get up on a stepladder. It was kind of a family joke about my grandmother's yellow (laughs) stepladder. And I had that and it was in her office, actually, her home office. But instead of a desk, there was a hospital bed. And there was a lady in the hospital bed in my dream. And I would climb up on the ladder and kiss her on the cheek and pull a sheet over her head. And within 24 hours, my mom would get a phone call that someone in the family had passed away. And it was always someone I didn't know. It was always like some uncle in Sweden or something, someone I didn't know. So always a family member, never a stranger or anything like that. That, That's amazing. So as you got older, like, did you... Were you, did you become more aware of your gifts as you got older? Like, how did that develop for you? Um, mostly it was dreams in childhood until uh, about 11 or 12, right around middle school. It started coming when I was awake. Um, by the way, the lady in the hospital bed is the great grandmother I'm named after. Oh, so, my goodness. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> I know. I didn't know that right away either. It took, a, it took a while for my mom to figure it out with a family album and going, do you recognize the lady? And I, I finally found her in the. I mean, that for park. such a young, a young child to have such a vivid, almost lucid dream. That's, right. that's amazing. How many times did this happen? Uh, five or six times. 
between the ages of about two or three and 11. Oh my goodness. And then, so as you, as you got older, you fostered your intuitive strengths. Did you take classes uh, or did it just develop like innate, like naturally as you went on? Yeah, it happened naturally. Honestly, when I was, you know, in middle school, what we used to call junior high. Um, yeah. <laughs> it never occurred to me that there would be classes for something like this. Right. It right. also never occurred to me that not everyone was having the same experience I was. So Right. Yeah, you know, that's I, common. Mm. Yeah, well when you're a kid you think if you're if you feel something everybody else feels it too, right? Exactly. So, I think it's important too because there are so many children out there that have these gifts and and they don't really know where to turn. So I think nowadays it's more kind of a commonality to talk about this and there's more of an avenue for kids to go to. But, you know, several years ago, even like 10 years ago, not so much. Um, Just let's see here. Um, One thing I read on your website that really struck me is you, and I agree with you, I believe that everyone is innately intuitive yes so uh, if some people yeah some people may I've talked with people that disagree with me on that but I do I believe that everyone we all have the the innate capacity to be intuitive and I almost equate it like a sport the more you're exposed to it the more you practice it the better you'll get do you have any advice for people that are just coming out and just starting to become aware of their gifts on how to foster them? Yeah. Well, first of all, let's, let's back it up half a step and start with yeah. people experience it differently. Yes. So some yes. people experience intuition as a gut feeling, right? Some mm-hmm. people will get goosebumps. Some people, right. some people actually think intuitive hits are common sense because it is so clear to them that obviously everyone else must also be getting the same message. Right. They don't think of it as a message because it it seems to come as a thought. Right. Right. That that makes sense. (laughs) So there are so many different ways to experience intuition that if, if you can identify how you experience it, then you're going to go, Oh, that's what that is. Right. So almost being more in tune with it. Right. And recognizing that and almost kind of keeping a mental log of those experiences so you can become right. more in tune with them. Yeah, I, I would suggest that. I would suggest, you know, if, if you're trying to develop it, keep track of when it happens so that you start to recognize it. Because really, it really is about recognizing it. It's not so much, I'm going to learn how to become intuitive. You already mm-hmm. are intuitive. It's kind of our um, guidebook for being on earth. Right. What are some of the most common types of intuition or clairs, if you will, that you see? And because I know you you hold many classes, so yeah. in, in, in your students as well as just maybe the general population. Right. Um, well, the clairs are you know clairaudient, clair um, clairvoyant. So we have clear hearing, clear seeing, mm-hmm. clear feeling, which is clairsentience. Right. Um, clairgustance, which is clear smelling. Or, no, that's Claire Alliance. Sorry. Yeah, no, I know. I, I had that backwards. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, I even wrote the book, and I still <laughs> get it mixed. <laughs> no, no, I mean they're less common. So I mean, you know, it's, right, you right. Don't so hear about them as much. I hear a lot of people talking about smelling, like they'll yeah. smell someone's aftershave, or they'll smell cigarette smoke, or a particular kind of wine, or whatever, um, or coffee. Would you know? They'll smell something and go, oh, that reminds me of Aunt Gertrude or whatever. Right. So um, tasting is, is a lot less rare, I think. But some people will get a taste in their mouth mm-hmm. and go, oh, that tastes like grandma's cookies. <laughs> you know, Some people will get that. It's, it's not very common, but it does happen. But I think hearing, seeing, and feeling are really the most common. Yeah, I would say for myself, the the clairsentience is is the most common. It just right. it passes down from my my maternal grandmother. Do you have a specific process for how you approach your uh, mediumship and channeling? I do actually. Yeah, I know it's different for for each person. Right, um, we all do it a little bit differently. Right. Um, when I sit down with someone to do a reading, 
what I will do is ground and center myself. I'll, I'll walk myself through a, a meditation, a real mm-hmm. quick one to, you know, put roots down into the earth and reach out into the universe. And then I'll open up my heart center and send a stream of energy into the heart center of the person I'm reading. And that way I'm connected very quickly and very clearly. And it just makes it so much easier. That's amazing. It's Let's so talk a little fun. bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Let's talk a little bit about the chakras. Uh, and for, you know, those that aren't too familiar with them, like what they are, um, okay. going from the head, you know, down and, and what each of those points in the body stand for. Okay, well, that's real easy, because I've been doing this for a long time. Um. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I feel like such a novice. I'm like, oh. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, The first chakra is actually the root chakra, and it's right in the area of the tailbone. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chakras are rainbow colored, right? So you have red, orange, yellow, green, violet, or blue, violet, and blue, indigo, violet. Goodness, what is wrong with me tonight? Uh, You know what? It's me. I've had such a, (laughs) I mean, hello, I can't even formulate my words tonight. Hello, people. So I'm just going to apologize to everyone who ever listens to this for me getting my information mixed. (laughs) But um, so, so the first chakra is red. It's, it's at the base of the tailbone and it has to do with life on earth, the physical Mm -hmm. stuff, you know, dealing with the physical world, jobs, houses, cars, relationships, all that kind of stuff. Everything that has to do with the physical world, we deal with um, money, especially is usually a huge issue with a root chakra blockage where if if people are struggling financially, that's where the blockage usually is. Mm -hmm. And it's just stuck energy that needs to be moved for whatever reason. The next one up is the sacral, and it's right above the pubic bone. That one is orange, and that has to do with creativity and creation. Uh, The next one up is the solar plexus. That's yellow. And that has to do with personal power, self-esteem, that sort of thing. Uh, The heart chakra is green or pink. It's it's represented both ways. And that should be self-explanatory where that's located. But it has to do with um, love and openness and connection. I think that's where a lot of where we feel intuition is in the heart center. Sometimes in the solar plexus. Uh, Throat chakra is about communication, and that's blue. And the third eye, a lot of people have heard the term third eye, but might not know what that means. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's right here in the center of the forehead, but kind of between the eyebrows. And that's really where the pineal gland and the, um, it opens up and it's it's where we can communicate Mm -hmm. kind of telepathically, where we receive information. And the crown chakra, top of the head, is violet, and that is our connection to the universe. Kind of, I mean, it's a weird place to put it, but kind of the umbilical cord to the universe is like through the crown chakra. What does it feel like? I mean, I've had moments where, especially the crown chakra, where I almost feel like a vibration, and it almost just, it's hard to put in words, but it almost feels like something unclogged and opened. Right. Um, I kind of describe it as tingly. That yes, that that too. Yeah. How? What else? I mean, with people that you've, uh, you know, instructed some of your students or just in, in other people that you know in the field, have they described any other sorts of feelings when one of the chakras or even several of them are opening? Um, warmth. People describe it as warm. Um, people describe it as feeling like air flowing. I get in- that inside their body. Um, if you haven't experienced it, what I'm saying won't make sense. Right. You <laughs> know what? That's actually a good point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, if you have experienced it, you don't need an explanation. It's just kind it's, of one of those things. It's just, it's something that you, cause I've had that happen where it's just, it's like you said, the tingly, the warmth that almost feels like a vibration and it just, you feel like a flood of energy. It's hard to put into words, but if you've right. had that, obviously you know um, what to experience. That was a really good little lesson on on the different chakras. I think it's very important to have those balanced. I mean, just in, in everyday life, just the balancing of the mind, body, and soul, mind, body, and spirit is so uh, very important. One thing I read on your website, and I think you offer classes on this as well, um, for discerning different types of energy and what that entails. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, I sure can. Um, 
energy is everything, right? It's everywhere around us. It's, you know, we're energy. The table is energy. The microphone is energy. The air is energy. It's everywhere. Um, Whether it's solid or not really depends on how quickly it's moving. And also denser energy that's also still air is usually what we call negative energy or heavy energy. Um, it, It just means it's moving more slowly. And that's where we can see things like apparitions um, because they can condense the energy to make us see it, you know, the more light and all of that. Um, So one of the things that I do with my students is that we go on kind of an energy hunt, I guess. Mm -hmm. I call it a paranormal investigation, but basically that's what a paranormal investigation is. It's reading different energies. And so... You know, you can tell if you walk into a place and you just don't like it. You know, I think we've all had that experience. We've all, yes, we've all been there. You just walk in and go, I'm not comfortable here. That's because the energy isn't resonating with you. Right. You know, and then there are other places you walk in and go, oh, I could be here all day. Yes. This feels so good in here. And that's because the energy is more resonating with you. And usually that's a higher vibration energy when it feels good. That's actually a really good way to put it. We do have, uh, I think, about three minutes until break, but we do have a question from chat, the chat room. And that question is, how do you open a chakra as a healer? Um, That's a good question. (laughs) And there's a lot of answers to that question. You know, yes, exactly. That's (laughs) what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of answers to that question. Um, One of the fastest ways that you can do it is with a pendulum as I'm scanning here looking for one. Um, Yes. I love using pendulums. I really do. Ah, there's one. Okay. (laughs) She has one right there. (laughs) Right. Welcome to my world. (laughs) Right? Exactly. I love it. So if I want to test, say, my, my third eye chakra, what I would do is hold the pendulum in front of it and see how it moves and see how it's moving in a clockwise direction. Yes, I can that see that. That means that my really chakra's open. Interesting. Yeah, that wow, means that my chakra's wow. open. So, except for the throat chakra, which goes counterclockwise. Let me see. I'm talking so the so throat much. chakra does go counterclockwise. But right. The rest of them go. Go clockwise. Right. And so you can oh, test wow. them. And if one of them isn't working, let's say my, my third eye wasn't working, I could just use my hand and spin the energy in front of it. And make it work. Oh, wow. It's, kind of, it's a quick way to do it, okay? That's when you're moving energy that isn't stuck by emotional trauma or something like that. That takes more work, and usually it takes a lot of emotional work, too. Right. I, I can imagine. So if, if, for example, if one of the chakras is clogged, you won't see the pendulum moving at all. Right, right. It'll just do this. So what happens if in, maybe this never happens. I've actually never tried this technique. This is amazing. If it just moves like left to right or right to left and not in any sort of clockwise or counterclockwise position, does that ever happen? It does. It does. And it usually means that there's some movement in the chakra, but it's not wide open. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, you know, one, this is kind of off, uh, kind of off the cuff but I like to go with the flow of the interview but um, it's just on my mind so I'm gonna go ahead and ask it in your opinion because you're you seem very uh, very excelled at this at, at, at metaphysical sciences and, and mediumship and channeling. And I mean, you offer all kinds of different courses uh, to benefit people that are, are learning to get more in touch with their, I guess, metaphysical side, if you will. Right. Uh, do you, I mean, in your opinion, uh, what are some signs of, I guess, fraudulent mediums or fraudulent channelers that you would tell people to look out for? Um, anyone who is trying to get you to come back a lot, you know, mm-hmm. like weekly or, you know, um, I, I have seen all kinds of shysters in this business. I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's ripe for it, you know, um, people who try to make you dependent on them, uh, people who charge exorbitant 
amounts of money to remove whatever um, I'm trying to think of what the word curses or something like that. Run. Don't walk away. Run. Yes. And and leading questions. And we'll get more. Yeah. We'll get into this more. We have to take a quick break. Yep. Stay tuned, folks. You're listening to the Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond on the WLTK DB Network with guest Christina Bloom. We're going to take a break. Stay tuned. Controlling transmission. WLTK DB. Let's talk. Maggie Reiki is a full service Reiki therapy center offering both in person and distance Reiki sessions. Reiki is a gentle healing energy that can assist in clearing, repairing, and maintaining energy that is vital for optimal health. Reiki can also assist with anxiety, depression, and even addiction. You can schedule a Reiki session by visiting our website, www.mackeyreiki.com. That's www.m-a-c-k-e-y-r-e-i-k-i.com. Ever wanted to host your own radio show? If your answer is yes, then the time to act is now. WLTK DB Let's Talk is now accepting new programming more affordable than ever. You create the show idea and we'll take care of the rest. Not only do we create your program intro and provide broadcast training, but also syndicate you to popular outlets like Apple and Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and more. You get all of this starting at 100 bucks per month. Three packages to choose from and built to make your wallet happy. Contact us at WLTKDB.com with your show idea and let's bring your dream to life. All topics accepted and you have full rights to your program. Contact us today and reserve your spot on WLTKDB Let's Talk. What are you waiting for? Let's do this. Twenty-one minutes past the hour, you are listening to the Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond. I'm your host, Nicole Strickland, on the WLTKDB network, uh, www.wltkdb.com, or the Let's Talk.com. We are talking with guest Christina Bloom, and before the break, we were talking a lot about her journey uh, as an intuitive, a little discussion into the chakras, and right before the break, we were talking about signs of fraudulent mediums and channelers so let's delve back into that discussion uh i know and continue that i know that one thing i mentioned is uh the asking of leading questions as well i think is a big red flag what are some others uh that you uh didn't list before the break that you would definitely tell people to watch out for well i would like to expand on what you were saying Oh yeah, sure. With the Absolutely. leading questions, because yes. I think that's an, a really important thing because it's, it sounds like a casual conversation. Yes. Yes. It sounds, you know, so if mm-hmm. you go to see a medium and that medium greets you and says, how are you doing? You know, how are the kids? How's your husband? Those right. are all leading questions and they mm-hmm. sound like a casual conversation. So mm-hmm. I am very careful not to ask those kinds of questions. You know, right. I might, you know, re- reach out my hand and shake your hand and say, hi, how are you doing today? Come on in. Let's talk. Um, but I'm That's not different. going. Yeah. And I mean, there's still pleasantries, but mm-hmm. when the pleasantries move beyond that to where, you know, oh, have you always lived in? santa barbara or whatever it is you know that's that's leading questions and um i i just i am not comfortable with that um the the other thing that i would like to say that might make people think that someone's a fraud but they might not be Mm -hmm. and i'm referring to myself here i don't get names i don't get names and And that's that's okay yeah but that's what some people judge it on Oh, whether or that's, not you're that's real. too bad. Right. Yeah, I agree. That's too bad because, you know, there's so much good information that comes through usually that, um, you know, judging someone because they get names or don't get names or they or they don't get the person that they want. That's you know, petty in my that's a little bit too black and white. I mean, it could be yeah. some off the wall concept that someone gets that may be so important to someone so I I agree with you on that right I just think I know it sounded like such a negative like Debbie Downer question but I think you know that it's definitely something to explore because 
nowadays, you know, I, I do think that people are, are running into that issue where they they want to get help and they turn to these people and they may not necessarily be qualified. Right. Genu- genuinely want to help someone. So. Right. And there, I'd like to throw in another category that the people might not be aware of. And that's that someone can be very intuitive mm-hmm. and not spiritual. That's true. <laughs> that's you know, true. they can get message all day long, but they might not be spiritual people. They might be very clear psychics. But that doesn't necessarily make them good people or spiritual people, you know. And so that's another thing that you have to watch out for. When you go to see a psychic, does it feel good? That's true. Do yes. you feel a connection? Does, does, it, does this person feel genuine to you? And the other thing with that, there are so many levels and layers to this, is that someone might come to me for a reading and we're just not a good energy match. You That's know? true too. Yes. It I mean, doesn't it may- mean that there's anything wrong with me or that person. It just might not be a good match. So um, I have a whole list of other psychics I can refer to for that reason. That's true. And that applies to, let's say, doctors, physicians, counselors. You kind of have yeah. to apply that. A lot of times it's a, you know, may, there may be a personality conflict or just some sort of energy conflict there. Right. If some, let's say someone goes into uh, to get a psychic reading and then maybe they've sat down for five, 10 minutes and they're getting that sense of, oh, I'm not sure if this is right. What would you advise them to do at that point? Continue on or just say, you know what? I don't think this is working for me. I'm going to leave. I always tell people, speak your truth. Yeah. Speak your truth. If, if I love that, I you love know, that. if it isn't working, it isn't working. That's true. I mean, it's what are simple. we without that, without truth, you know, got to yeah. be true to ourselves. Right. We do have another question from chat. It's kind of, kind of segueing off in a little okay. bit of a different direction, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question is, uh, have you ever lived in a place that was haunted? Um, I would have to say I've never lived in a place that wasn't haunted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it seems like everywhere I go, there's spirits around me. So, um, it's always interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like you're a beacon. I mean, a place can be paranormally active, but not necessarily haunted, but right. You know, obviously with the haunting, you're going to have anomalous phenomena, but yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're a beacon. Yeah, pretty much. So much. Yeah. I don't think I, I honestly don't think I've ever been anywhere where there wasn't spirits around. It's just that I notice them and other people don't. That's, That's true. Uh, Do you have a favorite place? Uh, It could be a a private residence that maybe you've investigated or a business or a historical location that you've been to. Um, Or it could be a few, it could be a few favorites too. A lot of them. Let's throw that one. I know me too. It's kind of hard to choose. (laughs) It's really hard to choose. It is hard to choose because each place is special and you glean different types of energy in in each place that you investigate. So in its own way, it's everything is special. And um, I do have to say probably when I'm walking in the woods, anywhere (gasps) in the woods and I'm connecting with those spirits, I think that's my favorite because it feels the most peaceful to me because it's not just people spirits, it's animal spirits and it's true spirits and it's, I feel like that's the most peaceful place for me. I I love that because I've I've often felt. I mean, this even goes back as to when I was a little girl. I I have always been drawn to nature and and being outdoors and being near trees. I mean, I even think rocks have energy. I mean, everything oh, has yeah. energy. So, I mean, I yeah. In your opinion, I mean, did you grow up a lot in in wooded areas to where you could have easy access to them I did. or? I did. Um, so, yeah. First part of my childhood, I grew up along the Mississippi River. So, oh, you know, beautiful. Yeah, it beautiful. was. I, I had the water. I had the woods. I had, you know, it was beautiful. And then we moved to northern Wisconsin, out in the woods. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yeah. So, like, so you've been pretty much in the woods. Your whole. That's awesome. I've always been yeah. drawn to very uh, heavily wooded woodlands. Uh, we don't have much of those out here in San Diego, sadly. We have palm trees and eucalyptus trees pretty much. But uh, right. what makes, I mean, this might sound like a kind of a dumb question, but what 
makes, I guess, the woods special for, I guess, attracting spiritual energy? Is there something unique with like the geography of, of the woods or just the topography of it or what, what makes it, I guess, a beacon for, I mean, I'm asking like 5 million questions in one question, yeah. but what makes it a, a beacon for spiritual energy is what I'm trying to ask. <laughs> Let's take this much information. I know, right? It, I know. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. Yeah. It, it's, I kind of feel like, first of all, those aren't places where people go out and smudge and cleanse them. Right. So um, you, you, you could have spirits that have been there for a thousand years, you know, true. because nobody ever said you need to go away. You're in my space. You know, so plus the animal spirits, the animals live and die in the woods and, and they're all over the place. And um, I'm not really sure, except that probably it's more peaceful. There aren't as many people around. That's true. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking, too. There's not a lot of, I guess, pollution from from people and not a right. lot of, I guess, ego, what I would call ego pollution. It's just very natural. I like um, that, that ego pollution. I just, you know what? I just came up with that on the fly. <laughs> I know. I don't know. It's just one of those days, I guess. Copyright that right now. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Ego <laughs> pollution. Copyright. Okay. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. Now, speaking of animal spirits, I mean, you know, many people are, are you know, animal lovers. Is it different, in your opinion, to, um, or the way, uh, it's hard for me to phrase this question, if you're channeling energy, does, I guess, a dog or cat's spiritual energy come through similar that, I guess, a human's energy would, or are there differences to that? Uh, there are differences, and the difference is usually that the, the animals come more through more easily, and they tend to communicate in pictures as opposed to words. Okay, that's that's interesting because I I've experienced that myself with uh, my cat Max who passed away in in 2016 and it seems when he comes through it's it's very visual for me mm-hmm. so that that makes sense um, yeah we do have another question from chat I know it's kind of like I like to like I said go with the flow of the interview but right, I, no I, I do want to attend to the questions in chat mm-hmm. someone's asking how do you uh, how do psychics and mediums differ? Um, that's that's, kind of, a, that's good, a good question. It is that's a good question. A good because, question. Yeah. because a lot of people may use them, those two terms interchangeable, like a ghost and a spirit, and they're two, two different entities there. Right. So, right. Good question. Good question. I would say that the difference is both are psychic. You can be psychic and not be a medium. But if you're a medium, there has to be some psychic ability for that to work. So mediums mm-hmm. specifically talk to people who were here and have crossed over. Okay. That's what mediums do. Psychics can pick up on, you know, who are not specifically mediums can mm-hmm. pick up on different information. You know, they, they, they're they the people who... Um, can kind of see where you're going on your path or they'll get feelings about, and this is a weird thing with me. I get cars like, oh. like, um, that's cool. Like if somebody is going to get into a car and there's a mechanical problem, they're not aware of, mm-hmm. I get that information. And specifically to like what exactly is wrong with the car? Oh my god! Right, and and some people aren't even aware that there is anything wrong with their car, and then you know it's like I'll have somebody whispering in my ear, I guess, or or I just get a feeling like you should have your car looked at. There's something wrong. Um, so medical people, you know, medical psychics, where they can just scan you and see what's going on with your body. You know, that's not necessarily mediumship, right? but it's a psychic reading. I kind of equate mediumship with more like channeling of, of energy. Right. Kind of like how I differentiate the two. Right. Really, really good questions from chat. Keep them coming. Uh, excellent yeah. questions. Your, uh, let's segue into your intuitive you program. I'd love okay. to hear more. I know listeners would love to hear more about that. Uh, what, what is that into? I mean, oh, oh there you go. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we should have done a book giveaway tonight. Oh my yeah. goodness, where, where was I? 
I didn't solution. think of it either. So don't yeah. worry about it. Well, you know um, what? I'll have you back on in the future and then we'll do it. There you all go. right. That sounds good. <laughs> um, the Intuitive You program actually came about in 2007. Um, I had been to a drum circle that someone else was leading and, oh. you know, met a bunch of people there. And that's when I was living on the West Coast. And uh, a few weeks later, I got a call from a lady who I'd met at the drum circle. And she asked me to teach her how to speak to someone who had crossed over, how to communicate. And I at that point, did not feel qualified to teach that. I had no idea how I was even doing it. And so I opened up my mouth to say no, and yes came out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And 12 years later, here we go. <laughs> and here we go. Oh, my gosh. So, um, that's how it started. And then I just sat down. like it was. I set it up as a weekly program. I asked her if she minded if I invited other people. So I put it out on Meetup, and I had 16 people show up in my living room like the oh following gosh. Wednesday. So <laughs> that's amazing. I know like all these people, I'm like, Oh, I am not prepared for this, but I just went like week by week and I channeled the whole thing in writing, just hand wrote it out in writing. Like what do people need to learn this week? And we went through the whole thing. And so when you were asking me about the different kinds of energy, that's chapter one. Oh, see <laughs> that. Yeah. You know? On your website, you list all kinds of different topics. Yeah, and people to choose from. How often do you teach these courses? Are they weekly or do they do they come about just uh, the intuitive you class? Yeah. Okay, I've got a, a level one intuitive you class scheduled for January, I want to say seventh, but I should probably look at a calendar before I say that. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> um, so I love it. Let me see calendar January ninth it's an all-day oh. class oh fantastic yeah and it, it's actually listed as a day and a half so all day saturday half day sunday um and then the next level class which is the book i'm currently writing but the the next level class of intuitive you is the 23rd and 24th i believe of okay. january so those are already scheduled and um, i'll get those up on my website if they're not already and uh, so those are that, but I, every Wednesday night, I teach a class on zoom oh, and great. the topic changes every week. So the topic for next week is empathy. Oh, that's yeah. a very, very important. Just if the world had more of it, right. Yep. It'd be yep. a better place. Different kinds of empathy, how to deal with it, how to get in touch with it if you feel like you're not. So that's kind of a big topic. And those are two hour classes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I do those every Wednesday and the people who showed up last night chose the topic for next week. That's oh, the way I do it. That's actually, you know what, that's very important because they have a say in, in what they're learning. That's That's amazing. Yeah. It sounds like the whole development of this program, it, it just came from way down in the depths of your soul, your inner wisdom. That I mean, that's kind of, I guess, what I'm getting from that. And it also comes from what people ask for. That's true, too. That's that whole list point. that's on my website, every one of those classes at some point, someone requested. Oh, my gosh. That is so interesting and, and fascinating at the same time. Do you have a favorite one that you like to teach or do you? Anything kind of having to do with astral travel or journey <gasps> yes doing journeys we did shape-shifting journeys last night I you know I was on your site today <laughs> and that is actually I like because I have my little notes here that's one of my questions so let's ask let, let me ask that okay so discussing the shamanic ancient shamanic process of shape-shifting and what that entails I, I just like zeroed in on that like that <laughs> that seems oh my gosh that seems super fascinating you know, so, what I, yeah, what I what really is love that? about that is that it takes imagination. That's what it takes. It takes imagination. And so uh, we started talking out about talking. We started out talking about, I can put the words in order when I try. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's coming for me tonight. <laughs> I take full credit. Well, I am <laughs> empathic. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. We started out doing a journey where um, I just talked them, talked the class through 
running through the grass on all fours. And what does that feel like? And the wind blowing and, and the grass brushing against you as you're running. And then you run into the lake and then you start swimming. Only you're swimming with fins and not with feet or not with paws or, you know, and um, every, you know, the, the people in the class were like, I felt it. I felt every single animal as we did that. So, um, you know, and went through a whole bunch of different animals and what they would be doing and what that would it feel like to experience that. And it's amazing. I want to try that. And so I guess like the end result, like what is the goal with that? Does it help to tap into that imagination? So then you can further, I guess, connect with that inner side of yourself, I guess. Is that kind of the yeah. goal of how you... Yeah. The next, okay, so we did that that exercise first so that people could feel what it feels like to, to be different animals. And then we talked about what everyone's spirit totem animals are. Oh, and then yes. and then everyone went in and became their totem animals to get information for whatever it is that they're doing in their lives. Oh, my gosh. How long is that class? Is that a, is that a whole day or two um, No, that's like an hour and a half, two hours. Oh it's scheduled gosh. two hours. Yeah, I think it's so important. And I don't think we tap into our imaginations enough. And I know that, you know, some people can argue like, oh, that can lead to problems. Yeah, I get that. But I mean, I, I think there's just so much with our imagination. Right. And that's just that's so fascinating. Yeah. Have you I've been meaning to ask you, have you had any uh, profound on this might sound like a silly question, but profound uh, um, maybe inspirational encounters with the spirit realm that you'd be willing to share? I mean, I know this question, some people may not be willing to share because I know it's so uniquely personal to that person. But for those that are willing to share, do you have any that just really hit you in the core? So many. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> no. um, I think one that was like a huge learning for me was um, I was called to go to someone's home because they had, you know, one of those um, wooden play structures in the backyard. Oh, yes. And they had like a six or seven year old boy and he would be fine until he went out and played on that and then get really angry. Oh. And it would take him like hours to calm down because he oh, was so no angry. And um, so I was called in to find out what's wrong with the play structure. You know, this thing is brand new. What's going on with this? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the structure. It was where they placed it. Oh. There was a residual haunting in the exact place where they put up the play structure. Oh, and in the residual haunting, it was an old man beating up a child over and over and over and over and over. And it was like they were just caught in this loop. And you could tell it happened two or 300 years ago. I mean, it wasn't new. And um, the, the first thing is to think, oh, that man is evil. He's a horrible person. He's doing this to this kid. Mm -hmm. And what it was was that the kid was being so severely abused that he provoked this man into killing him oh, just to goodness. get it over with. And I still get goosebumps when I talk about this. And this was like... This like this is a long time ago, um, but what happened was I was able to, with the help of my guides, get in there and break it up, and ask the kid, "Who do you want to come and get you?" And he asked for his grandmother, so I asked for his grandmother, who came and got him and took him off into the light. And then I asked the the the, the poor man, who at that point was just like sitting on the ground with his head down, shaking his head, going, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it over and over and over again. He just kept saying that. And he was convinced he was going to hell. You know, in my world, that doesn't even exist. So you can't go somewhere that doesn't exist. And yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm like you can be forgiven. And he, it took me a long, what felt like a long time to convince him that he could be forgiven. And then I asked Christ to come and get him and Christ came and got him and took him off to the light. And, and after that, no more problems on the play structure. That, I mean, that goes to show that residual activity can be healed. Yes. Not just intelligent. Right. You know, some people may think, Oh, you can't really do anything with residual activity. And I, 
I've often believed. I, I beg to differ on that. That's a yeah. perfect example of that. Yeah, that I one like, is one that just sticks with me. And I, I probably did that 20 years ago or close to it, you know. So that one really sticks with me. Does the man and the little boy, have they ever come back to thank you or to communicate with you since Not they've Not that moved I remember. On? So they're just, sounds yeah. like they're, they're where they are, um, where they need to be. That's right. truly amazing. Oh, you my know. gosh. And, and what I got from that is that you can't really judge based on your first impression of what you see. Very important point. Yeah. Very important point. Oh, my goodness. I, I was like starting to cry on that. And I. Yeah, me too. I've kind of. <laughs> I was. Yeah. I, yeah. I was getting like the whole body shivers. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Any other profound experiences you'd like to share? Um, channeling Christ consciousness is pretty profound for me. Um, oh, yes. It, um, I have a hard time explaining it. I can imagine. I mean, it is just, it is the purest love you can feel. And mm-hmm. um, I, I, that that energy channels through me and just goes to people. My face changes, my eyes change. Um, I look different when I'm channeling that energy, and I feel different. And it's hard for me to let go of it, you know. So I mean, because I channel a lot, you know, they come and go, and it's like, mm-hmm. thank you for coming, thank you for sharing your wisdom. Bye. This one, I have a hard time letting go of because it just feels amazing i i don't have a word big enough <laughs> right it maybe it has a hard like. time letting you go maybe too it would be if because i i mean i've i'm going based on experience and i don't know if this is actually a tapping into that i'm not sure but those moments where you have you could be doing whatever you could be riding you could be driving you could be exercising whatever and all of a sudden you just feel that rush of everything's fine Every, you just feel like it's hard to put into words, but like pure love, pure peace, just like everything's perfect. It's almost like it's just your soul's lit on fire with tons of love and positivity. Yeah. Could that be tapping into that? Or is that oh, absolutely? Because that, that happens absolutely. to me. I can't say that often, but often enough to where I recognize it. And it, it's okay. just such a beautiful experience and it doesn't last that long it may last right. 30 seconds to a minute but that's oh my gosh and I imagine that that when you channel and when you tap into that that can obviously help heal uh, ethereal energies or founds or those that need to to move on right yeah absolutely it does and it, it really has a profound impact on the people who are in the room Right. When it happens, you know, um, I can imagine. Yeah. Physically, emotionally, spiritually. Mm-hmm. Uh, have this is kind of a silly question, but have you ever been um, to maybe like a private residence where you've done a paranormal case study and you've realized, OK, there, there's someone here that you think might want to go home is what I'm going to use the term go home or go into the light. What's your process of, of navigating that person to that point? Do you have a specific process for that? Um, it starts with a conversation mm-hmm. to find out what they want um, okay. and find out kind of where their head is at too, you know, like where their consciousness is. Um, some people are still stuck here because they feel like they, they're they afraid of where they're going. It's mm-hmm. like it, religion has permeated so much of our culture that um, some people are afraid of where they're going and really it's just convincing them that they're going to be okay. And, you know, I I have no problem calling in an archangel or Christ or grandma, if that's who they want (laughs) to come and get them so that they are comfortable going with someone that they trust. And that's really what my process is. You know, I mean, standing there telling somebody to go to the light if they don't know how to do that is pointless. It, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's pointless. They, they need to understand the whole process. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not rocket science. I mean, I think it does take skill, but it, it takes a, a, um, a genuineness on the part of the person helping too. Right. It's not it something that, that you can 
do through ego or anything like that. Right. I've I've been on um, a few cases myself where where that has happened, and it, it's just such a it's hard to put into words, but it's such a beautiful beautiful experience. It really. So we're is. coming toward. Uh, we have about ten minutes left in the show. Um, you obviously do paranormal research. Uh, do you use uh, besides like metaphysical types of tools? Are you prone to using like a certain type of gadget or tool? Because I know some people prefer like audio. Some people people prefer more videos. There are certain, I guess, I'm like the queen of asking like 10 million questions. And I'm trying <laughs> to ask one tonight. I don't know what is wrong with my brain. So That's okay. I'm, I'm going to okay. like pretend I didn't even talk the last 10 seconds. What's your, <laughs> I'm going to just simplify it. What's your process, I guess, to approaching a paranormal case study? Um, well, my cell phone, actually. Oh, um, see, I've heard that so many times, and I use mine too. Yeah, um, if I want to see if there's orbs around the room, I just put my camera on and hold up my cell phone, and I could, and the the camera picks that stuff up. You know, it's. I used to do professional photography, and this oh, phone see, is yeah. more advanced than the first <laughs> professional camera I had that was digital. Right. It has more memory than that camera had by a long shot. Exactly. So, you know, these, these phones are very sensitive and they're, they're very advanced and you can download um, apps. And I know there's a lot of disagreement on how good they are, but they'll pick up energy. They're sensitive devices, you know. I actually just, um, when I investigated the USS Hornet, it was last, not this last July, but the July before um, that's when I met some friends of mine, um, Tammy Benjamin and, and Jason Cobb, and we did an overnight investigation there. And they were using obviously their their smartphone, and they were using the Spiritist device for ITC. Right. And it was so effective that night. I mean, we were like asking historically relevant questions, and we were getting very uh, profound responses. And so I downloaded it. And now I use it as an yeah. ITC tool. So. You know, the phones can go a long way. Uh, what kind of phone do you use? Are you an iPhone user? or um, No, I have a Galaxy S10 Plus. Oh, okay, yeah. I actually yeah. use mine's the Note 8. I'm due for an upgrade. But yeah, great camera, yeah. great phone. Um, so And there's so much memory. And yeah. it, it's crazy. I, and I've got a gazillion yeah. pictures and videos and it, plenty of room for storage. Um, I did want to also say... <laughs> First of all, I'm going to put a plug in because why not? Why? Of course. You can My buy goodness. this from me directly. So, you know, look me up on Facebook or go to my website. There's a contact form. Get a hold of me. I'm happy to ship you a book. Um, the last two chapters in this book, oddly enough, are paranormal investigation. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, it sounds like, you know, I can't wait to read it. I, I love reading uh, these types of books and, and getting different uh, takes on on uh, approaches to methodology. I think that all of us, we need to be more collective because we can each bring something to the table. Absolutely. So, yeah. so your, your website, is it Christina bloom.com? Yes. And it's so, Christina with a K. Okay. And bloom has two O's. Okay, perfect. So yeah. you got it. Christina bloom.com. Uh, this is now we have just a few minutes left. Uh, what are some other ways for people to get in ta- uh, contact with you, uh, social media channels that you want to Sure, uh, sure. Um, let's see. There's Christina Bloom SA on Instagram and Christina okay. Bloom Spirit, Christina L. Bloom Spiritual Advisor on Facebook. You can get me in any of those places or on my website. Fantastic. Do you have any, I know you mentioned earlier the classes that you have weekly and what are coming up. Are there any other events that are coming up that you would like to promote? Anything like um, that? Right now, I've just got the weekly Wednesday classes and the the two intuitive you classes in January. Um, th- you can get a hold of me. I can get you the information. I know I've got them listed. I also have a, a meetup.com page. It's meetup.com I, I slash one spirit connection, which is what my business name used to be. Um, but meetup doesn't let you change it once you put in a business name. So, no. <laughs> or you can go into meetup.com and just put my name in and you'll still get there in the search. Um, but that that's where my calendar is. 
Oh, fantastic. So if someone yeah. wants to uh, register for one of your classes, they can just contact you, you know, via right. Facebook or online. Yeah. Um, I also okay. am doing, uh, I'm completely online at this point or over the phone. Uh, I closed my brick and mortar office this month. So um, I, I prefer online at this point. I can reach more people. Yeah, but it's effective. Very effective. Yeah, I, I, I still do private readings. Um, I do group readings. I've done seances online. I've done. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, if I can do your private party still on Zoom and we don't have to be anywhere near each other. So, um, you know, for a pandemic, it's a, this is a really useful tool. I mean, we all know Zoom, right? I mean, yeah. Oh my gosh. You <laughs> yeah, are we're... one busy lady. I mean, it's just, I, I, this hour has gone by fast. It's been just a pleasure talking with you. I've learned a lot. You truly are an amazing human being. Oh, thank so, you. So please keep up the work that you're doing. And thank, thank you. you so much for coming on the show. I would love to have you back on. I would love to be back on. I have a big announcement coming up in eight days and I can't talk about it yet. (laughs) Oh, well, we'll have to wait for eight days, but I definitely will get you back on and we can Uh, do a a book giveaway and that sort of thing. And there's so many other questions I have for you that we didn't get uh, to get into tonight. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you. You too. Next week we have uh, Karen Anderson on. So I'm excited to be talking with her. And I do want to say, I hope everyone has a uh, wonderful holiday season. I know it's kind of tough this year because it's, you know, we're inside and social distancing and all of that, but there's always something to be thankful for and uh, spending time with uh, family and friends and that sort of thing. So please have a happy and safe holiday season. I'm going to say that every show until after Christmas, until we get to the new year. Again, thank you to our guest tonight, Christina Bloom, and I do want to leave you with this last note. Here at the Afterlife Chronicles, we are bridging the gap between mortality and the afterlife one experience at a time. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Nicole.